Good time. Thank you so much, Sarah, for pointing that out. Good point. <laughs> so in answer to the question about Agile, so what you've been doing today has largely been a snapshot of the kinds of practices you use in Agile. So typically in software development, as it used to be seen, there was something called the waterfall model. Um, and the waterfall model is basically a, a set of stages, um, analyzing requirements, doing design, doing uh, implementation, doing testing, and things like maintenance and releasing the software um, in a strict process. And that's the way software was always done and it worked. Um, the problem, problems with that kind of model are, it doesn't give a lot of opportunity for redirection or feedback. So if, if requirements change, which they typically do in academia, then you want to be able to reset your direction. And Agile gives you a mechanism to do that. So by taking all five of those stages and essentially compressing them into small iterations, um, what you're doing is you're giving yourself the ability to reset your direction of your project, reprioritize what's important and focus on what's important. And you're constantly doing that. So what you did today was you had a set of issues that were raised on your repository and these could be normal requirements for your project. But um, what you were doing was you were estimating how long they were going to take, <clears throat> excuse me, prioritizing them in terms of their importance for the project. And in academia, that could well be the research goals you have. Uh, and then basically doing some work around that. Um, and that is essentially um, an agile process. So what you do then is you would do the same process again. So once you'd actually gone through a sprint and completed that successfully, you then go around and do the same process again. And you keep on going until you had your software. And that's essentially what an agile process is. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question, Rachel? Yes, what it does, thank you. It, it's a really strong methodology that I know the, the software team at my institution has adopted wholesale and they find it very, very productive, but it's something that of a bit of a cultural division between the science team and the software team as they have their own little methodologies that I think would be usefully adopted in science if only we knew about them. So thank you very much for answering that. No problem. Um, yeah, it's it's typical to see people adhere to the waterfall model without thinking of things in agile, um, particularly in academia. It's just the way things are seen to be done. Um, and it's a lot of historical reasons for that. People, I mean, it, it's better to have a process than no process. That, that should also be certainly said. Um, you know, and the good thing about the waterfall, it does have a positive, and that is it has a very, very strong um, gating process for getting your requirements right that's followed correctly. And I think whether you're doing Agile or Waterfall, um, getting a good understanding of what's required is the foundation for doing everything correctly. If you don't have that, it's very difficult to get things done that will meet the objectives of what it is you actually want for the project. And the great thing with Agile is it helps you to reevaluate those requirements as you go and as they potentially change. And that's the advantage there. So yeah, um, if, if it works, I would do it. And I think, I think Agile is a very good fit for, for a lot of research domains. Right. I mean, it, until recently, I think I didn't even hear about the term waterfall. So it's not commonly used in, in academia at all. But I think the, the takeaway for me has been it helps to actually con have a set of requirements and actually define what those are, um, as opposed to the rather nebulous approach that a lot of academics typically follow. Um, and often that's because we don't know what real questions we're asking because that's the nature of research. So that's been very helpful for me. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, Rachel. Great question. Right, does anyone else have any other follow-on questions? Any other questions at all? Anything about the course? Uh, I see we've got a couple of minutes left. No? Okay. Um, I had a final question uh, for everybody. Who feels that they're going to, to use, this would be a good idea to get an, an idea from the group. Who feels that they're going to use what they've learned in the last five days in a useful way in their own projects and their own work? That's a good answer. Okay, thank you. Um, right. Um, so let's see. Mm -hmm. Who's managed to... I... Sorry, go on. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to ask do you think um, there's probably sort of like a follow-up course to on this and then probably how to the idea of agile because i've been hearing about agile but i don't really know much about it yeah it's probably a recommended um, framework for incorporating agile and all that thing yeah so 
So we've touched on Agile a bit today, as we said, but you're right, there's always more to learn. Um, so what you can do is you can, there's a link that I think Rachel has posted into, into the chat there, which is, which is a very good overview, I think, of Agile. I've had a quick look at that. Um, so that could be one resource. There are also uh, Agile development training courses, which you can go on to. There's one by uh, a training group called APMG, I think it is. I, I did it a while ago, and I found that to be to be truly out outstanding. Um, and it really transformed the way that I see software development and the value of doing things in an agile way and the right places to use it. Um, so that's a course I did, I think, in 2018, I think it was. Um, maybe James can correct me. Oh, James isn't here, is he? Um, so, so yes, that's another thing you can do. You can get certified uh, in terms of being able to do agile development as well if you really want to learn the ins and outs of it. Um, so there's always more to learn. But even doing a little bit of agile is really useful. You know, doing the prioritization and the estimation is is, is very valuable in itself. That's a good point. Very good question. From the, the perspective of uh, TVS as a whole, it's something that we could perhaps arrange a uh, colloquium to have a, one of our software team come and uh, give an overview of the process. If that's something that would interest everybody, then I can look into organizing that. Very good. Uh, that sounds great. And Rose, I see you have a question. Yeah, just kind of a question comment, but um, and actually Alex uh, was ad addressing this a little bit in our breakout session. But for me, the hard part is like starting at the, you know, like applying the MVC model, I guess, right? Because I think I'm one of these people that would just make a, a program and everything would be in one file. And so like thinking about how, how to split things up to me has been like the most challenging part in terms of how would I apply this, like all the sort of... Um, you know, logistics of GitHub and all that, I, it's really great and been super useful. But for me, the hardest part is going to be like, how do I break up the what I need to do into the right components, I guess, you know. So any any thoughts on that would be great. That's a very good point. So, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, typically what I do is when I'm writing a program, um, I will basically put it in one file. And that's, that's how I'll start. Um, and I find that's the quickest way to make progress at a very early stage quickly. Um, the key is knowing when that is reaching its limitations. Um, and because if you if you continue in that method, obviously you'll get to a monolithic file that contains everything without being properly sort of modularized and it doesn't become very easy to understand at all. Um, so the key, key becomes when to do the split. And I think that comes with practice. I also think it comes by looking at software that is reputed within your own domains to be good. So you know, um, one thing that that uh, James, um, Bill Gates said quite famously years ago was um, to be a good programmer, what you do is you look at good programs people have written, right? Um, and it's the same with being an author. If, you, if you're, you know, writing books, you read, uh, love, you know, uh, you, you read Tolstoy um, or you read, I don't know, pick a pick one out of, out of uh, uh, George R. R. Martin, if you like his style of writing, right? Um, but anything that rocks, you know, that basically, um, you know, um, it gives you a passion for reading it and is, is really good. And that gives you a way to understand how to structure and write books, right? And stories, you know, people who are writers often read other, other authors' books, not all of them, but a lot of them. And that gives you a good place to start. And the same thing is with software development. You can see good examples everywhere of software, also bad examples, um, but it's a good place to understand, you know, sort of how to structure things. Um, but like I say, coming back to the original point, knowing when to do the modularization is key. A really good idea for that is to get a third, another person to have a look at your code. So if you're always coding, a good rule I always use is always code for someone else. And that could be a future version of yourself six months down the line, trying to understand the code you've written now. Right? So do yourself a favor is what I usually say to people. By making it easy to understand now, you'll, uh, you'll be thankful later when you come back to it. But that's also great for other people. So if you give your code to someone else, you know, if they can reproduce it and they can understand your code and they can generate the results that you've got, um, you know, they'll give you some, they can give you some insight into, you know, whether it's sort of designed and structured in a way that perhaps needs more modularization. Um, and even just talking about it, often I find when I'm doing that with someone else, I'm talking myself into making it more modular or improving it and finding its limitations. So even if they're the uh, ubiquitous nodding dog, as it were, that's still a valuable process. Uh, we, we touched on, I think, code review a little bit, but not very much. So um, there's been studies done of code review, which can help you improve your code. And there was a study by Cohen in 2006. I'll try and find the, the reference and post it around in the Slack. But basically, 
if you get one other person just for an hour to look at your code as you explain it to them, that's the most valuable. Um, they can give you some valuable insights into whether they understand it or not, and also whether you understand it or not. So often when you explain very complex simulation code particularly, it can be very difficult to explain to others in a way that's understandable. And if you can't make it understandable, there's probably something wrong with the way you've written it um, or the way you understand it. Um, either way, the code might not be right. So there's a couple of couple of points there, thoughts. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah, definitely. I'd like, I think you said just like practice, right? It's a kind of a very new way of thinking about it. So just gotta, yeah. and maybe yeah. try it with smaller examples or something, smaller problems first. And then, yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. No problem at all. Yeah, it comes with practice. Um, yeah, the more you do it, the better you'll know when to make that break and make it more modular, I think is the key. Yeah. Any other questions or points? All right. Okay. So, um, who's managed to finish the uh, the first the first survey there on uh, for today? Has everyone managed to do that yet? Let's just see if, if how people have managed to uh, to get on. So, if you can throw up a positive, you know, thumbs up or something, just to let us know just roughly where you are. Okay, and uh, probably only a couple of you in that case have probably done the uh, the post uh, post course survey, but uh, please please do that. We will remind you to do that at some point. Um, but uh, that's that's probably the most valuable one to do, if you could. Um, so if there's if there's no other comments or questions, um, I think a few thanks are in order. Um, uh, sorry, please. If I may, I would like to go first with the thanks and oh, on please. behalf of the yes. Thank all of our instructors for a truly fascinating and really valuable course. So I very much appreciate it. And I'm sure many other people who have taken part have, will do. And all of the people who are following us asynchronously as well. I've had emails throughout the week from a number of people who, for various reasons, couldn't join the Zoom call live, uh, but are still following through the exercises offline. So. Um, thank you very much for the whole organization. Okay, yes, uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Well, I had a, had a few thanks to add there. Uh, thanks also firstly to Rachel as well for the opportunity to teach it. Um, it it's been truly great to teach you all. I've really enjoyed it. Um, we've had some great discussions on the material and, and how to apply it. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Pip as well and, and Rachel, of course, for, for, for organizing the workshop. Um, also to my fellow instructors, Alex, James and Sam, it's always a delight to teach with you all um, and a huge thanks also to all of you as I say you know it's been great to, to meet and teach you all um, we've had some great discussions it's been awesome um, so our thanks to bearing with us when we ran into any other any sorts of difficulties that we did technical and organizational so thank you for that um, so a big round of applause to, to all of you uh, it's been it's been great thank you very much um, so when you've completed the surveys um, uh, feel free to, you, I guess you can leave and then complete the surveys, but as long as you complete the surveys, that's that's the main thing. Um, and uh, I hope you found the course useful. I wish you all truly a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. You've earned it. It's been a hard week. So, yeah, get out there and enjoy the sunshine. Hopefully it's sunny where you are. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Pip or, or Rachel, before we close? I, I will just, reiter I just Sorry, reiterate saying thank you, everyone, for coming, and thanks to Rachel um, uh, for, for letting us all do this for you and um yes good luck i hope to see lots more astronomy papers with good code now <laughs> absolutely and thank you all once again and thanks for everyone who participated in this course it was a great fun great thank you everybody um don't forget the uh the surveys um and uh yeah we will do that <laughs> cheers all right thank you, you all soon. thank you rachel Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And bye bye, everybody. Bye.